Hello viewers and welcome back to Rain City. In today's video I'm going to be doing some cooling system repairs on this 2008 Toyota Tundra that's located behind me. It's a TRD off-road package. It has a 5.7 liter engine in it and it also has 122,294 miles. Now I have the appraisal sheet right here. This customer traded it in on something. I don't, I don't know what they bought. But it says here on the appraisal sheet, it is eating up coolant. Um, I didn't see anything obvious when I pulled it in. I didn't see any uh, coolant dripping underneath of it. So I went ahead and put my cooling system pressure tester on it. And I just left it on overnight. And I come in the next morning and I had two small puddles of coolant. One in the front of the engine and one in the back. Let me show you what I found. And let me show you the repair. This one is the water pump, it's pretty obvious. I've done quite a few of these. What it'll do is it'll drip down on the crankshaft and run down. It always seems to collect right here. And see if I can zoom you up in there and you'll be able to see it. You'll see all the coolant crusties up in there, right around the, the weep hole, right there. It's not leaking now, but this thing took like oh, three hours under pressure before it finally started coming out of there. So where this one is leaking, leaking out of the back of the intake, it'll come right down between the bell housing and the, the main body of the transmission. Next, let's yard this intake. So there is the leak. It's from this plate. Looks like it's going to be a pain to get at. It's got the water tube, transfer tube there, and the air injection tubes you got to pull. Knock sensors. But that's the guy. If you see coolant leaking out the back, the intake running right there, right down on the transmission. That's what it's from. Well, I'll start cleaning this up, get the vacuum out. I think we'll just kind of do a little bit like that. I should do it. Do it. And we've got a bunch of, what are these, 12 millimeters? Looks like about 14 of them. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have to bend this little ear on this transfer pipe. I tried to pull it off on the head, but it looks like it's riveted in down there. So if I have to, I'll bend this little ear back, but, but I'm not going to try to mess with it down there and destroy it on the bottom of the cylinder head. Oh yeah, it can come up no problem. I had to jump under there, reposition the pan. All right, we'll pry a little bit more. Right there, just kind of let it flood out the back there. a little bit on that side. We got 
Put a mark on it. Guess I could take a picture. Usually I describe a little mark. Usually mark everything. Because I'm like, yeah, you know, I can remember that. It goes in that one and that one. And you may not be putting it back together until the afternoon or the next day. And you're like, you know, I, yeah, where does it go? Yeah, it'd be so easy. I remember those, but yeah, it's gonna hit that pipe. It's the only thing holding me up. It's right there. Can I twist this? Kind of drag it up the side. Just a little bend on that. And then we can bend it back. That's why they made it such thin metal. They did that so you could bend it. That's exactly what the engineers were thinking. Yeah, that worked great. And then we'll pull this pipe out of the front here. this water transfer pipe. Two big O-rings on it. And looks like they're in good shape. And then there's got all that antifreeze down in there. There's a leaking right out of here. Silicone just didn't set good. Well we'll get it cleaned up and put some new silicone on it. Right there, that area.
That gets the bulk of it. You don't want any coolant in these holes. Getting closer. Then I'm gonna kind of wipe up some of this gooey around the outside. Don't have to get it too good. Yeah, when I silicone this down, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put antifreeze in it. I like to time, time stuff, uh, so it's end of day, so it can sit overnight, and then I'll put, uh, put coolant in it and put it back in the service. Or if I'm doing an oil pan, I put oil in it. Or transmission case half seals, whatever I'm working on, I, I like to let it sit overnight. In fact, I do it almost every time. I'll put a couple rags down in there and then we'll do our final final prep. Right, I'm gonna spray these holes out one more time. Then I do final wipe down with alcohol. This is kind of a small flange. We're having heat and, and uh, coolant and pressure behind it. I think, anyway. Although this thing did make it 122,000 miles. And then since this one, I don't want to have to do this again. There is some oil residue that will be on those shop rags. So the very last one will be alcohol on just to tell
If I had a lint-free rag, that'd be nice, but I don't. I'm just going real soft here. I think I've got this. And then I think I got this roller stick good. And I've already ran this to the parts washer. This is just five minutes in the parts washer. It's so clean, I guess. I've got this all prepped. And I'll do the same thing, wipe this with alcohol. And we'll put silicon on this. And then we'll put a little seal glide here and some new O-rings. So I happen to have O-rings for this. The last job I did, they ordered, I'm pretty sure these are the same ones. They, they look uh, identical and they fit right on that pipe. So this has got two new ones on here. I put a little bit of seal glide around each one. But this is a 10 pack. If you guys are looking for the number, there's, there's a number. I think it works for most all the water pipes on all the engines for Toyotas. Yeah, I keep that. I don't know why they order 10, but that's great uh, when they order stuff. I don't send miscellaneous O-rings and gaskets back. I just keep them in our cabinet over there, and you never know when you'll need them again. Okay, I've got my pipe lubed up. This lubed up. Silicone on it. We're just going to fish weasel this in together. Maybe we'll start this first. Just going to put that up here. About like that. We don't want to wipe the silicone when we put it in on anything. And you obviously want to make sure that you don't forget the pipe. That'd be bad news. Okay, I'm coming down here. Get close to that pipe. We are on the pipe. Let's kind of twist it. All right. And gently bring it down. Kind of go in with it. Drop it right down. Nice and neat like that. And then I remembered where my studs went because I put a little mark with my screwdriver. I'll run these in first. bolts in including this long one couple nuts Pipe feels like. Looks good. 
and we're just gonna usually just slowly work my way from the center outward. Okay, the workshop manual says to install the cover within three minutes, torque the bolts within 15 minutes, and their torque is 15 foot-pounds, and then let it sit for at least two hours. Well, this thing's going to sit overnight. Alright, one final pass. And there we have it. Well, thanks for supervising guys. I'll go ahead and take it from here. Put this thing back together. I think this repair should take this vehicle now to a quarter of a million miles. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.